Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, greetings. Um, I pray all is well. Um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus strengthen you according to his will and his purpose. And I pray that his love have been increasing in our heart, um, causing us to search and seek him much more. I pray that in everything that we've been learning, that it been teaching us and strengthening us to fight against the temptation to try to control us and, and try to make, it, make us submit to the things of this life to make us conform to this world. Man. Most important, brothers, since I pray in all things that you begin the revelation that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is greatly and most importantly, more than anything, he's faithful because that's who he is. Brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. Uh, and it, it's a heavy meal, uh, but it's definitely needed. But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so hard to get into a place to, re to receive all that the Lord has to pour into us today, okay? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your holiness that lead us to righteousness in you. Lord, take us deeper today, Lord. Renew our hearts, Lord. Jesus, Lord, reestablish the foundation of our heart that our foundation will not be rocky, but it will be solid because it is completely built on you and who you are. Lord, rekindle that fire in our heart in any type of way or form and fashion where the enemy be trying to uh, smother that fire by the things of this life, Lord. Help us to be united with you more than we ever have before, especially, Lord, in this hour that we are in now leading up to your return. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way. Speak freely. That we may get an understanding of who you are, Lord. In Jesus' person, I will pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word. Okay? Now, Brothers and sisters, in this hour, uh, there's many things that is going on. There's many things that are said, but there are many things that are not said. There's many way that man. There's many way that men are walking in this hour, but there are also ways that men are not walking, and it is very important to their eternal well-being. And so often in this life, instead of running into the light, we'll rather hide in darkness because I've been there before. I know what it's like before the cross to want to hide in darkness because I'm afraid of coming into the light because the light exposed things that would not normally be seen. The light that is in Christ exposed things that would not normally be seen. That's why Jesus said, me and Lord, darkness instead of light because they're afraid if they come into the light, their deeds would be exposed and in this hour our lord and savior christ jesus is bringing many things into the light and exposing many things that have been hidden most importantly most importantly the greatest thing that will be exposed in this hour leading up to his second coming in his testimony and a revelation that he is god and the title of this message is no curtains the truth exposed the title of this message is No Curtains, The Truth Exposed. Sometime if you ever watched a movie, there's a theater where they got the curtains. Or if you ever sat in the auditorium at a school, they have the curtains. And if you ever went to any type of play or some form of fashion, then there is a curtain that is on the stage. And on this stage, there's a curtain and behind the curtain, behind the scenes, there are things going on, but you can't see it because the curtains are closed. But the Lord, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus said in this hour, I am tearing down the curtains. I am opening up the curtain and the truth is about to be exposed of everything that is happening in this earth. But most importantly, the veil that have already been torn through my sacrifice will take those deeper into my presence who long for me and seek me and want to be where I am. Oh, man. Brothers and sisters, in this hour, Christ Jesus is about to 
humble men in this life by exposing those things that are dark that man have been peddling behind out of a resumption that it is true. Because the truth in the matter is, in this hour, God is exposing the absolute truth that comes by the revelation of Christ. And he's opening the curtains. He's tearing down the curtains that the truth may go forward in our heart the way we live. But also, the truth may go forward that it may bring everything under the subjection of his will at his second coming. And the greatest truth that will ever be exposed to us is the knowledge of who God is. Because scripture tell us that God hoped that none would perish, but all would come to a full knowledge of who Christ Jesus is. And the greatest thing to be exposed to is the revelation of who God is and through his love. The greatest, the greatest thing to be exposed to is God loves. And in this hour, God is shaking this earth, shaking this world to tear down the curtains that have been over our eyes. Those who are called by his name, he is tearing down the curtains that who that, that have been over our eyes that we may see his glory and who he are, that he is God. But those who walk in their pride, the plot, the pride will keep curtains on their eyes because they choose to not see the truth that God is saying. The Lord said, the Lord woke me up in the vision. The Lord said, son, only those who live by my instruction will escape in this hour. For in the book of Revelation, it said that there was a spirit that came out and tormented men for five months. Well, in this hour, there's a spirit that's been coming to the earth and torment man for a short period of time. Those who do not love the truth. And only those who live Jesus only those who live by the glory of God will be protected from this spirit that would torment man for a short period of time through this hour of delusion why because God is tearing down the curtains and revealing those who are his children and those who are not okay? so what do we say church let us be Exposed to the truth by the renewing of our mind being being transformed into the posture of Christ. That in all things we may live as he did. And as we live as we did, we did, we follow the we, we run to the feet of the Father by submitting ourselves through the testimony of Christ Jesus. For no man has seen the Father except for Christ. So therefore, in order for us to to be submitted to the feet of the Father, we must live by the testimony of His Son, Jesus. In order for us to be submitted to the feet of the Father, we must be obedient to the testimony of His Son. For God created the earth and the earth is His footstool. Therefore, as we obey the testimony of Christ Jesus, it's like we're sitting at the feet of the Father. You know what I'm saying? As we obey the testimony of Christ Jesus, it's like we're physically sitting at the feet of the Father that when we be received up, when he come, we already have a place at his feet because we have already been sitting there in the spirit. Oh, man. Church, we are a spiritual city. Therefore, as we live by the spirit now, when we get to the spiritual kingdom that lives and dwells forever, we will already have a place at his feet because we have already been sitting there in the spirit. Oh, as we walk by the Holy Spirit in this life, the kingdom to come, we are already seated at his feet because we have trusted what he said about preparing a place for us. So as Jesus had went ahead of us and prepared a place in his father's house because he said in his father's house is many mansions. Okay? I remember our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and as he took me in the spirit, I seen beautiful houses lined up on the right side of the street. It was a bright outside, but there's no sun there. It was so peaceful that you could sleep in the middle of the street. And I asked the Lord Jesus, Lord, what of those beautiful houses lined up on the right side of the street? He said, son, remember it was written in my father's house as many matches. Well, why is it bright outside, Lord, but there's no sun there? He said, son, because the new heaven and new earth, there will be no sun because I'm the light of heaven. Well, Lord, why is it so peaceful in the street? Because there will be no corruption. There will be no sin in my glory. Therefore, in order for us to experience the glory, we have to live beyond the curtains of this life. 
in order for us to see his glory, we must live beyond the curtains of this life because his sacrifice torn the veil that separated us from his presence. Oh, and as we live that way, his truth is exposed in our heart. And therefore, we live by the spirit. And as we live by the spirit who hovers over the eternal kingdom, then as we live that way in this life, then we are already sitting in a place that is prepared for us in his kingdom. So what do we say? As we live by his glory in this life, it gives us access to the mansion, the place that he prepared for us in his kingdom through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, everything we do is preparing us for the place that we will reign that with Christ. Therefore, as we live by the spirit in this life, we are sitting in the place that we will be that we will rest that in his glory forever. That's why it's important that you have a relationship with Jesus now. That when you be received up when he come, you have already been sealed eternally with him. But also your place is secured by his feet because you made your placement by the way you live here. Oh, by what? The sacrifice of his testimony. Why? Because as we live by the gospel, it tear down the curtains and the deception of this life. That we may walk in the presence of God through the veil that have been torn through the blood of his sacrifice. Oh, man. Next, Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 29 through 31. Ezekiel chapter 22, verses 29 through 31. And this is what it reads. Give me one second. Through 31. Watch it. It says, While they Ammonite prophets uh, see false see false visions of peace for you, while they divine lies of escape for you to place. Oh, excuse me. 22. 29 through 31. The Holy Spirit just said to me, even by reading this scripture, that there will be many false prophets that rise up, rise up in this hour, having false vision, not true vision. There is true prophets that have true vision, but there will be also false prophets that having false vision through the through divination of the spirit of the Antichrist to lead the people of God astray. But as you rest in God, your hope is eternally in him, then you will forever be safe because his your soul is in the palm of his hand because you chose to obey the gospel that reveals that he chose you first. So because Jesus chose us first, as you obey the gospel, you're simply choosing to obey the choice that he made, for, the choice that he made, Jesus. Jesus loved and chose us first through his sacrifice. So Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you first. So as we obey the gospel, we choose to obey the choice that God have made through his own sacrifice. Oh. And as we choose to obey what he made, the truth will, as we choose to obey, the choice that he made by choosing us first, we saying, Father, we submit to your will. Oh, Why? Because as we do that, it shows that we have obeyed the gospel and the curtains of deception have been torn off this, torn, uh, torn from us by the deception of this life because we no longer fear death because we live in him. Oh, man, what do we say? God is faithful beyond measure. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 22 verses 29 through 31 This is what it said They will deal with you in hatred Take all your property Leave you naked and bare And the nakedness of your depravity uh, uh, Depravity uh, Excuse me Excuse me brother I'm sorry 22, 22, um, 29 through 31 It says those people of the land have practiced oppression and extortion and have committed robbery. They have wronged the poor and needy and they have oppressed the stranger without justice. Hear the words of the Lord. He said, I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand up in a gap before me for the sake of the land that I would not destroy. But I found no one, not even one. Ezekiel chapter 23, 30 is prophesying to this hour that we are in. Last the last four years of the last administration, we seen that there was a big thing about building the wall. But God had that bit that, that physical wall uh referring to a spiritual wall that needs to be rebuilt. That last four years was so such a big thing about building the walls at the border 
uh, of America. But the truth of the matter is, really, really, people are hated about the wall being built because many of the globalists in the one world government wanted open borders so the whole world could be one family because Revelation 13 is happening right now. Where they're building a one world government where well, they already built it but they it's coming out so they're trying to open every border in every country so people can go to and from as if it one world. Okay? But here what God is keying in. God allowed for there to be a big talk the last four years about building the wall to reveal to the church that the spiritual wall needs to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But look what the Lord said, verse 30. He said, I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the sake of the lamb. Watch it. That I would not destroy it, but I found no one, not even one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with fire and wrath. And I have repaired their way by bringing it upon their own head, says the Lord. The last four years, God was searching in America looking for a man to stand in the gap. Okay? There was obedience churches standing to the gap, standing in the gap. But there also were none of, none, no, some churches was not standing in the gap. Even leaders, politicians, high up people in authority that God wanted to stand in the gap and turn to us right. But you know what? They did not hear the words of the prophets. They did not listen to the words of the prophets. They did not listen to the obedient church warning them and telling them to turn from what they was doing. And listen to what the Lord said. He said, I searched for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the sake of the lamb that I would not destroy it. So it was a requirement for him not destroy it. But he said, look, I found out one. Therefore, here's the judgment. Everything that is happening right now in a new administration that is going to take place in the next few years, God is going to pour their own deception and wisdom on their own head. He giving them over to a reprobate mind and their, their own wisdom, they think they know, they think they're wise in the God, is going to be poured out on their own head as a judgment from God. Why? God wanted them to turn to repent for the sake of the land. But they did not answer. They did not respond. So what did the Lord say? I will have my glory and they will know that I am Lord. And the remnant will rise, rise up out of the ashes victorious. Okay? You know what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches? Okay? The Lord said, therefore I have poured out my alienation on them. I have consumed them with fire of my wrath. I have repaired, I have repaid their way by bringing it upon their own heads. Many leaders in America are going to be repaid by their own wickedness on their own head. These first few years is going to be a humbling experience for those in America. But it's going to lead to the separation of the wheat and the tares so the remnant may rise up and be victorious in Christ. Okay? The next thing, the Lord, he said, son, the prideful will be deceived in his hour. The humble We'll be exhausted through the revelation of my grace that when these delusions hit this land more than they ever have before, they will remain faithful and be received up when I'll come. Why? Because they love the truth and rejected that which is false. In this hour, there will be many that accept that which is false, but those that are the remnant that love the truth, who is Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior, will walk faithful to the end. Why? Not because of their own personal strength, but because they trusted him to provide and give them everything they need to sustain, even through persecution, that they know that they hope is in a better country to come. Okay? The last but not least, uh, Prophecy 101. The curtains are being torn in this hour. We are in the hour of the revealing of Jesus. The book of Revelation tells us that it is about the revealing of Christ. And right now we are in this seven year period leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus where the curtains, the curtains is being torn down on this world. Okay? And Christ Jesus is going to be unveiled at the seventh trumpet. Okay? Here's the next thing that's going to happen on God's prophetic time clock. And I'm going to read it to you. It's in Revelation 9. Any one of you who are listening right now online, please take note of this. Okay? Begin, leaders who are listening, begin to prepare your flock. Those who are in Christ, begin to prepare your families. Because this is going to happen next. It's going to be all over the radio. It's going to be all on the news. This is going to happen next. The sixth trumpet is about to sound. The sixth trumpet in the book of Revelation is about to sound. It's going to be all over the radio. It's going to be all over the news. It's going to happen. It's screaming soon. Okay. So let's read what's going to happen. Revelation 9, 14. It said, Saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound in the great Euphrates of Eve River. So there's going to 
be a they, 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 it's a release the four angels who are bound in the great Euphrates River. The Euphrates River is in the Middle East. It runs through Iraq, uh, Iran, Syria, and Turkey. That's going to be four spirits, right? Four spirits, right? That's going to be uh, released by, from the uh, Great Euphrates River, and it's going to be a war that's going to wipe out a third of mankind. Let me let me read it. Okay? Don't be fearful, church, because Jesus is with us. But you have to know these things and not turn a blind eye so when it happens, you won't be afraid and not cut off guard. But this is finna happen to scream the soon. That's all I'm finna say. The Holy Spirit wants me to say, this is finna happen to scream the soon. It's not far, far off. This is finna happen and scream this soon. Be prepared for it because it's gonna be talked on all the radios, across the intercoms in schools, all around the world. Okay? The sixth trumpet war is World War Three. World War Three is about to happen. Watch it. It's a saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet released, the four angels who are bound in the great Euphrates River. So the four angels who had been prepared for a point at hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of troops of cavalry was twice 10,000. 10, There's finna be a 200 million man army and the whole world will be engulfed in this war. Okay? Okay, let's say, and this is how I saw the horses and their riders in my vision. The riders had blessed crates, the color of fire and of hyacinth, sapphire blue and brimstone and yellow and the heads of the horses looked like the heads of lions and from out of their mouths kept fire and smoke and brimstone burning suffering. A third of mankind was killed by these plagues by the fire, the smoke and the brimstone that came from the mouths of the horses. For the power, the power of the horses to do harm is in their mouth and their tails for their tails are like serpents in their head and it was with them to do harm. Okay? The rest of the mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent Jesus even of their works of their hand so as to ease so as to see worshiping and paying homage to the demons and the idols and gold and silver and the bronze and the stone and the wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk and they did not repent of the murders nor the sorceries the drug intoxication nor their sexual immorality. Okay, so these four angels, because the heart of man is prideful, these four angels is going to be released from the from the great uh, Euphrates River, and it's going to reveal the pride in man's heart. Because if they were humble, they would not be deceived. If they was humble, they would not be deceived. These four angels is going to be released from the great Euphrates, and it's going to reveal the pride of man's heart to the point where there's going to be a World War III that's going to wipe wipe out over two billion people because of the pride of man's heart. Why? Because they rejected the truth that come from God. They did not want to listen to God, and therefore God said, "I will allow strong de delusion, send a strong delusion in the earth to reveal that y'all rejected my teaching, that you did not love the truth." Okay. Here what the Holy Spirit said to the churches. This is finna happen to scream this soon. Here, here what the Holy Spirit said to the church, brothers and sisters. This is not something that's finna happen far off in the distant shoot, different futures. This is right, right outside your door. So be preparing your family right now. Okay? What the Holy Spirit said to the churches. Be preparing your families right now because this is finna be over the intercoms in the schools. This is finna be all over the radio. Where you're gonna hear it across the news, across the radio, where they're gonna be able to say, World War III. They're gonna be like, fire is everywhere. Flames are everywhere. World War III. That's gonna be the talk on the radio. They're gonna be like, it's fire everywhere. World War III. Which is Revelation 9 14, which is the sixth trumpet. That is gonna happen soon, world, where 2.5 billion people will be wiped out because of the pride of man. Okay? God said, this hour, I will send a strong delusion. The sixth trumpet is about to be sound. World War III is about to happen. Prepare your family. Okay? God is tearing down the curtains off this world. Everything is leading to his second coming. And he's going to purge all unrighteousness, all sin. So the Lord wanted me to share that with you, brothers and sisters, to warn y'all on, on what's going to take place. Let it marinate in your heart. Don't be fearful. But know that God got us. But you have to know that these things are going to happen because some people are going to see these things and be afraid because they will not expect them. This is finna happen and scream this soon. On to my next. This is the next thing to happen on God profound prophetic climb time for. The next thing is finna happen and scream this soon. Not far out down the line. It's finna happen and scream this soon, brother and sister. Get ready. Okay? If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer. Say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. 
Please forgive me my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person I we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, again, do not be fearful, but rather be encouraged because Jesus, I will let nothing happen unless I reveal it to my servants first. Well, church, we are his servants. So he revealing these things to happen so we may not lose heart, but gain heart because it causes us to trust his word is faithful because he said these things to us. Okay. Okay. Um, what should our mindset be in this hour? We should, we should rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Because true success is not defined by abundance of things in this life. But true success is being retrieved by the one who will receive you into life when he comes. Because we have million degrees, big empires, and all these things. But when Jesus comes, we don't know, we don't go with him. Then we was a complete failure because we did not obey his will from the heart in truth and the spirit by walking in faith in Jesus. But we can have none of these things. When he comes and we go with him, then we was a sad, smashing success. Because we fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey him from the heart and in truth and spirit through the testimony of his son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Don't be fearful, brothers and sisters, but let a but a lot of love of God to instruct us in this hour and increase our faith in this hour because there's a great reward coming and, and nothing worth the new heaven and new earth. Nothing is worth missing the new heaven and new earth that He's preparing for us. That's why He's shaking this world right now because a new life is coming in that is in His Son Jesus. And you have a chance to taste it right now by accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. So what do we say? Church, it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. America. 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 Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Judgment is on the land. And God ain't pulling it back to his second coming. Judgment is on this world. God is not pulling it back to his second coming. Until everything is put up on the feet of his son Jesus. Therefore, church, let us look to the hills because our redemption is near. It's time to go see our Savior and be with him forever at the marriage of the Lamb. Will you be there? Well, it depends. If we, me, you, it depends. If we obey the gospel and it did to the end through the mercy of his sacrifice and the grace of his love. Brothers and sisters, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you and I pray that it bear fruit that leads until you turn leads to fruit that wells up into eternal life. Remember, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us, loves us so much, even, even to the death on the cross. And if you have made a mistake, there's no condemnation. Let God grace pick you up to reign to more obedience, which is to be with him forever through the righteousness of his glory that is revealed through his spirit. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Goodbye.